In 1873, Jake wakes up in the middle of New Mexico without a single memory of who he is or how he got here. There's a wound on his stomach, a picture of a woman he can't recognize on the ground, and a strange bracelet on his arm. Pulling it doesn't do anything, and hitting it with a rock is useless too. Suddenly, three cowboys show up to ask for directions and think Jake must be a criminal on the run, so they try to capture him, only for Jake to quickly defend himself and kill them all in seconds. Then, Jake steals some clothes, money, and a gun, before taking one of the horses into town in the company of the cowboy's dog. When he makes it to town, Jake notices there aren't many people left and it's all rather poor. He enters a seemingly empty house to look for some water for his wound, but he's found by Preacher Meacham, who doesn't lower his weapon until he realizes Jake's amnesiac and needs help. Meacham takes Jake to his church and takes care of his wound as he points out the shape is strange and it couldn't have been a gunshot, it was almost cauterized too. He also explains this used to be a mining town, but everyone started to leave when they ran out of gold. At that moment, some gunshots could be heard outside. It's Percy, an insolent young man that likes to cause trouble because his father is the only source of jobs for this town thanks to his cattle business. The local barman, who everyone calls Doc because of his old profession, tries to confront Percy because he's tired that the boy keeps drinking for free and scaring off his clients. The Doc's wife Maria tries to stop him but it's too late, now Percy's angry and brings Doc closer to hit him. Meacham cuts in to stop them then, and to make fun of him, Percy begins asking the town for a donation to make up for Doc's bad fortune. Jake refuses to collaborate and hits Percy, a gesture that impresses Ella while she watches with interest. A furious Percy fires a warning shot and accidentally hits a man, so Sheriff Taggart comes to arrest him. Nat, a Native American that works for Percy's father, warns Taggart that it isn't a good idea to ever arrest Percy, but Taggart explains he has no choice because the idiot shot a deputy and must be taken to the federal marshal. Meanwhile three cowmen are drinking while taking care of the cattle when suddenly, something falls nearby and explodes as it covers the whole area with bright lights. Only one of the men survives because he falls into the river while relieving himself, and when he comes out, he finds the land obliterated. Back in town, Taggart takes Percy to jail and finds a wanted sign with Jake's face on it. Speaking of Jake, he visits the local tavern and is approached by Ella, who wants to know where Jake found the bracelet. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by Taggart, who has come with his men to arrest Jake while his grandson Emmett watches through the window. Jake refuses to give up and beats all the men up, but when he's about to shoot Taggart, Emmett comes inside to stop him. At that moment, Ella hits him on the head and knocks Jake out, causing him to have a flashback of him lying next to Alice, the woman from the picture, an abandoned house, some gold coins, a bright light, and some weirdly shaped beings. When he wakes up, he finds himself in jail with Percy as his cell neighbor. Since the boy keeps bothering him, Jake knocks him out with a punch. In the meantime, Percy's dad Dolerhide is hurting the only survivor of the explosion to make him confess what really happened to his cows because he doesn't believe the bright light story. He's suddenly interrupted by Nat, who has come to inform his boss of what happened to Percy and the fact the infamous Jake is around, so Dolerhide lets one of the horses drag away his employee before gathering his men to go to town. Moments later, while Taggart puts handcuffs on Jake to take him to see the marshal, he lists all the crimes Jake is accused of, including arson, assault, robbery, and killing Alice. Jake doesn't believe that last part because from that little memory he got, he could feel how much he loved Alice. Jake and Percy are put together in a car for the transfer, and Ella takes the chance to approach him again, apologizing but also explaining she couldn't let Jake get away. Emmett doesn't want his grandfather to leave either because he's the only family he has, but before the car can take off, Dolerhide shows up with his men. Dolerhide wants his son back and accuses Jake of being the thief that stole all his gold, so he starts an argument with Taggart to stop him from taking them away. This is suddenly interrupted by a bunch of lights appearing in the sky. Jake's bracelet starts beeping too, and when the lights get closer, it's revealed that they're alien starships that begin attacking the town, starting many fires and scaring the horses. As all the men take out their weapons to defend themselves, Emmett tries to hide under one of the buildings and Taggart goes after him to rescue him. However the aliens are also kidnapping lots of people, and they take both Taggart and Maria with them, thus Ella runs to rescue Emmett instead. The car with the prisoners takes off until it crashes on the ground, and Jake breaks Percy's finger to free him from the handcuffs, but they can't find a way out. Suddenly Jake's bracelet starts glowing and shoots an energy beam that destroys the car's door, allowing Jake to escape. Percy is too scared to run and Dolerhide has to pick him up, but before they can go too far, the aliens take Percy as well. Jake tries to use the bracelet again and manages to shoot down a starship, scaring all the others away. He and Dolerhide come closer to check it out and find it empty, so now everyone in town believes this is the work of demons. A sudden scream makes them turn toward a house, where a person shoots at some kind of beast that runs away in the same direction the starships went. Nat finds footprints on the ground and is sure he can track the creature, thus Dolerhide announces they'll take off in the morning. He wants to bring Jake as well because of the bracelet and when Jake says no, Dolerhide hits him, but Jake just hits him back before leaving. The next morning, Jake discovers Ella's following him and jumps on her to demand answers. Ella explains the aliens took her people too and she's been looking for them for a long time, 
so they should work together to find them, but Jake refuses and leaves again. Moments later, he finds the house he saw in that vision, and a new memory hits his mind, he sees himself coming to the house and meeting Alice with a kiss. He also brought a bunch of gold coins that Alice didn't like because it was dirty money, but their argument was interrupted by a light melting the coins through the roof to take them away. The bright light took Alice too, and Jake could see her connected to some weird machine. Meanwhile in town, Dolorhide gets his men ready to go, and Doc, Ella, Emmett, and the dog join them as well. After a few hours of riding, they're found by Jake, who has decided to help them after all because he wants to find Alice. When night falls, the group is shocked to find a huge boat standing upside down in the middle of the desert, which makes no sense because there isn't any river nearby. Since it's raining rather heavily, they decide to spend the night inside. Nat wonders if they should have called the army, but Dullerhide refuses because he remembers his days as a colonel with bitterness. He tells the story of all the men he lost in war, and Nat comments he loved hearing Dullerhide tell those stories to Percy. This angers Dullerhide because those stories were for his son only, and he scolds Nat, sending him to keep guard. Emmett watches this whole discussion with interest and is curious about Dullerhide's knife, so the colonel gives the knife to the kid for him to protect himself. Meanwhile Doc takes the chance to finally learn to fire a gun from Meacham, and Jake looks for a source of clean water to clean his wound. Ella finds him and reminds him it's important for him to remember when suddenly, Jake's bracelet starts beeping again and a bunch of rats begin running away. It turns out the alien is here, and it kills a bunch of men from the shadows. Emmett hears the dog barking, and when he goes to check, he's found by the alien too. Emmett accidentally drops the knife in fear and the creature reveals a set of extra limbs to grab him, but at that moment Meacham shows up and tries to shoot it to save the boy. The bullet does nothing and the alien attacks him until Jake shows up as well. His bullets do nothing either, but the bracelet reacts and Jake shoots with that instead, causing the alien to run away. Afterward Jake checks on Meacham, but unfortunately the preacher dies in his arms. The next morning, Emmett can't find the dog, and Dolorhide only has a few men left. Jake and Doc bury Meacham and offer a few words before rejoining the group to keep following the alien, and during the journey, Dolorhide tells Emmett the story of his first kill to teach the kid not to hesitate next time. Hours later, Nat finds more footprints going in the direction of the canyon. The group tries to hurry up, but in the middle of the road they're suddenly ambushed by a cowboy gang. To everyone's surprise, this gang puts their weapons down when they recognize Jake as their old boss, it turns out these are the men that helped him steal the gold. Jake's pretends he remembers them and orders them to take them back to camp, where leadership has been taken over by Dolan. Jake tries to order his old gang to follow him, but Dolan stops him, explaining they're angry with Jake because he abandoned them to take the gold to some woman. The gang takes the gun from Jake and starts beating him up to get him to confess where the gold is, but they're interrupted by the bracelet beeping. Jake uses it to kill Dolan and make everyone else drop their weapons, allowing the group to escape. The gang immediately begins chasing after them, but once they're back in an open area, they're found by the aliens, who open fire from their starships. One of these ships kidnaps Ella, so Jake follows it on his horse until he's close enough to jump on the ship and shoot it with the bracelet, causing them to fall into a river. As Jake and Ella climb out of the water, they're attacked by the alien pilot, who hurts Ella before Jake manages to kill it with the bracelet. Ella's wound is pretty serious, but Jake covers it with a piece of her dress and carries Ella in his arms until he finds the group again. Doc takes a look at Ella but unfortunately it's too late, she's already dead. Jake barely can register the tragedy before the group is surrounded by a group of Chiricahua Apaches that capture him and take them to their tribe. An Apache warrior throws Ella's body to the fire while the group is approached by Chief Black Knife, who explains with the help of Nat's translation that they blame the cowboys for bringing the aliens to this area. An argument ensues until the bonfire suddenly flames up and Ella walks out of it, apologizing for having lied to everyone. It turns out she's also an alien and she took this form as a disguise, it only needed a bit of time to heal. Ella's from a different planet than the aliens that came to Earth, but her people had also been killed by them. These aliens are looking for gold because it's rare for them too. The people they kidnapped are still alive because they're using them to study humanity's weaknesses, and if they send this information to their home planet, a whole army will come back. Black Knife is ready to take his men to fight the aliens, and Ella points out they can find them if Jake manages to remember the location. To help him, the Apaches prepare a special brew that kicks off his memory, and Jake finally remembers that he and Alice had been in the aliens' operation room. The creature experimented on Alice first until he killed her, then it came for Jake with a surgery tool that gave him that strange wound. Jake fought back using that tool, and when he tried to leave the surgery table, he accidentally put his hand on the bracelet the alien left there, causing it to attach to his wrist. Afterward, Jake ran out of the building, discovering that was the alien mothership connected to a series of caves in the canyon. The next morning, the group rides to the area and Ella explains the mothership is digging for gold and the aliens are hiding inside. The smaller starships fly by and enter the top of the building often, so to save their people, they should use the caves. Dolorhide wants to find a way to lure the aliens out to allow Jake to sneak inside unseen, but an argument ensues with Black Knife because he has his own fighting strategies and he doesn't want his people to be led by a white man. 
Meanwhile Jake rides away to go looking for his gang, who is currently having a fight over how to divide the little gold they have, they also have the dog. They want to run away from the aliens, but Jake points out that the aliens will find them anyway and asks them to fight with him to recover all the gold from the aliens. Back in the canyon, Nat's explaining to Black Knife that Dolorhide's a good man that saved him after the war and gave him purpose, which a surprise Dolorhide finds very touching. Black Knife doesn't believe Dolorhide can be a good warrior with these few men following him, but at that moment, Jake shows up with his entire gang, and everyone finally agrees to work together. The group spends the night getting ready for their plan, and Nat's allowed to sit with the tribe because he's still considered a good Apache. Ella takes the chance to tell Jake she won't be around for long, and Jake answers with a kiss. The next morning, the group hides while Jake and a few of his men begin climbing the mothership to plant a bunch of explosives at the top before going back down. The plan works and the explosion causes the aliens to come out, so the group opens fire on them. Emmett and the dog are on watch duty while Doc goes around taking care of any wounded men, and Jake and Ella enter the cave. A fierce battle begins between aliens and humans with casualties on both sides, and Dolorhide's knocked off his horse. When an alien is about to kill him, Nat comes to save his boss and captures the alien with some rope, but the alien's stronger and drags Nat to the ground to attack him. Dolorhide tries to get the alien's attention with a few shots that do nothing, but thankfully the creature's head suddenly explodes when Doc lands a shot on its weak spot. Then Dolorhide checks on Nat and tells him he's the kind of son he's always wanted before Nat dies in his arms. In the cave, Jake and Ella find the mining machine first, and going deeper into the tunnels allows them to find all the kidnapped victims connected to a bright light. This light tries to hypnotize Jake as well, but Ella destroys it with a shot and everyone finally wakes up. While Ella disconnects the victims, Jake follows a noise down the tunnel and finds a bunch of aliens, so he shoots them all with a bracelet, but there are more coming. Jake positions himself in front of the tunnel that connects the mothership to the cave and shoots the aliens as they come while Ella guides all the victims out. However instead of going out too, Ella goes deeper into the cave, and Jake follows her. Outside the mothership there are more aliens coming out too, and one of them goes after Emmett. At first he tries to hide, but when the alien comes closer, Emmett remembers to be brave and stabs the creature. Back in the caves, Jake discovers Ella has gone all the way to the base of the mothership because she wants to destroy it by detonating the bracelet. Jake can't seem to take it off, so to distract his mind, Ella kisses him, effectively making the bracelet fall. Then Ella climbs into the mothership's core and asks Jake to pass her the bracelet, but instead of just dropping it there, she takes it with her deeper into the ship, ready to leave this world if it means saving it. Jake wants to go after her but more aliens show up and he has no choice but to run into another room for safety. Outside, Emmett sees all the victims leaving the cave and makes the announcement, but when Dolorhide hears Jake and Ella aren't with them, he enters the caves as well. In the caves, Jake's suddenly grabbed by an alien, who wants to put him back on the surgery table. When the procedure is about to start, Dolorhide shows up and distracts the alien with a few shots, giving Jake the chance to shoot at a pot of melting gold that falls on the alien and kills it. Since the aliens are losing, the mothership activates to leave the planet. Jake and Dolorhide run out of the caves while an alien tries to stop Ella, but as soon as the ship leaves the ground, Ella activates the bracelet and makes the ship explode. With their enemies gone, the group takes the chance to meet with their loved ones. Emmett reunites with Taggart, Doc sees Maria again, and Dolorhide finally sees Percy free. Sometime later, Jake rides to the old house to leave flowers in Alice's memory. Then he returns to town, which is now flourishing again thanks to all the gold they got from the aliens and will get its own railroad soon. Percy now behaves and even pays his tab, so Dolorhide decides to make him his business partner. Both Dolorhide and Taggart, who has adopted the dog, are surprised to see Jake return, and when he points out he's a wanted criminal, the men tell him he can go in peace because they'll lie and say Jake the thief died in the caves. Jake leaves the town for good after shaking hands with Dolorhide, ready to start a new life. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.